but you don't think of uh, Pakistani or Afghani, Iraqi, do you? No, you don't refer to me. You don't think that way, but that's what it is. This is what appeasement does. This is what cultural psychopaths have done to us. So let's go to the callers, then we'll take on to another topic. Take it to another topic. Uh, Perry, WMAL, welcome to the program. Yes, um, one thing I don't understand, and oftentimes we're on the same sheet of music, but I don't understand, maybe it's your limited knowledge of Islam. I've been practicing Islam for over 20 years. It's the best way of life. It changed me totally to a productive member of the human family. And if you know the actual verses, clear verses of the Quran, first of all, in the chapter, the 19th chapter, which is titled Mary, which is mother, the mother of Jesus, it says in there that the angels were wrangling over who would have charge of Mary because they knew and she would... You know, I know all of that's in there, but there's also verses about slavery. You know that as well if you read the Quran. And yes, but it's not... If you fasten it without the context, then people go away with the wrong idea. Well, wait a minute. What, what context can they be about enslaving non-Muslims? Tell me the context I'm missing. One more point. One more point. Jesus is mentioned in 11 different places in the Quran as the Messiah. That's number two. Now, as far as slavery, it tells you in different instances, like, who to take as a wife. He said it's better to take a believing slave than a non-believing um, um, non maiden. So things like that. Wait. So you're you're admitting that your holy book calls for slavery? You just admitted that. Calls for slavery is just the context of that time. They were uh, actually slaves, but also you can find that in the Torah as well. well okay, okay. Yes. Right. And to be fair, I've said that. I've read the Bible, the uh, Old Testament. I said that. Uh, to be fair to the discussion, however, I don't see any Jews rampaging across the Middle East taking Christian slaves. Do you? No, and the ones that are doing it, the ones that are, well, they did it here in, in America a long time ago, that's another subject. But the, um, the Muslims or so-called Muslims that are doing these horrendous things in the name of Islam, I don't call them Muslims. It's like I don't call them Christian. Good. Well, good. You know what? You actually encourage me every time you call. Because I think you're a just man who's a peaceful man. I mean, it's as simple as that. You always encourage me with your... I think your separation from the animals in ISIS. And, and let me ask you something. Let me ask you something because I've I've had you call before. You are a member of the Farrakhan Church, right? Black Muslims. Yes, sir. Okay, be honest with us because it, I know you swear on your holy book to be as honest as you can under all, all conditions. I want you to swear on the Quran that when you speak to fellow black Muslims, they don't sympathize with ISIS. Oh no, sir. No, sir. Oh, no, sir. Not those actions. No, sir. We as we in the nation of Islam don't even carry as much as a pen knife, let alone automatic weapons on Toyotas and, and lighting bombs. So, well, you see that? So people don't know much about your own your own church. We know that Farrakhan is always this, uh, uh, spewing hatred for Jews and uh, America. We know that. Maybe his own, uh, own adherents know more about peace than he does. No, uh, well, first of all, he All right, let, let's not let's not go down that road. But I do. I want to say I do appreciate your calls every time you call the show. Uh, are you able to accept a copy of my book called Government Zero? Or would you be offended by it? No, I wouldn't because I already have an, um, of the impending civil war. I've gotten into it a little bit, but I've just been so busy. Um, All right, you know what? All right, as long, don't bring it. Don't please don't bring it around to your mosque though. And if you do, put a plain brown wrapper around it. That's all I say. <laughs> All right, my friend, always a pleasure to hear from an intelligent, peace-loving man, by the way. It's always encouraging. There's no, no, no wise guy statement in that. It's absolutely real. Perry from MAL calls all the time. He's a member of the, uh, of the Muslim, I forget the name of the church, the Nation of Islam, excuse me. 855-407-282, to stay in the line. Jack, WABC, do you have anything to add about the stabbing in Sacramento? Mike, this is Jack. It's a pleasure speaking to you. I listen to you every time I get a chance. Get to the I don't blame you. Yeah, so what's on your mind today? What? It's like a bad scene in The Sopranos when they're stuck out in the New Jersey uh, woods. Tony, I, in the swamp. What? Tony, we uh, we we found the uh, Rus 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 Russian. Where Where are you? 
I hate cell phone calls that break up. I'm sorry, Jack, we couldn't hear you. Let's go to the... <laughs> I love that scene. I always wanted in The Sopranos for them to follow it up. And because the Russian got away, remember they thought they shot him? It was left like, oh, wait a minute. That's Putin. He's the one who got away in the woods. He became the leader of Russia. I should have known. That, that's the next thing that will come out of Josh Ernst's press uh, conference. We have definitive proof that the character in The Sopranos, who uh, the boys were trying to kill, uh, who got away, actually went to Russia and joined the KGB and worked his way up to becoming the president of Russia, who is now illegally bombing Syria against the wishes of the pansies in the European Union. What's this now? Jack's gone with the wind. I think we're going to move on. I'm going to give you all the news headlines that have just broken between the time I started the show and now that you can't get yourself. I do it for a living. I'll be right back with the latest headlines from around the nation, around the world, on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Breaking news on the McCarthy story. Now, many of you don't know who he is. He's a congressman. He was supposed to uh, take over for Boehner as the head of Republican a party. And now he dropped out. Now we find out that there was a leak of an affair he was having with another Republican Congress person, a woman in this case. But now there's a twist to it that we're reading on the Daily Caller. Did someone at DHS, that's your own Department of Homeland Security, edit the Wikipedia pages of Kevin McCarthy and Renee Elmers? Well, listen to the story. An internet address originating from the Department of Homeland Security was tied to entries made on the Wikipedia pages of North Carolina Rep. Renee Elmers and California Rep. Kevin McCarthy, alleging that the two Republicans were having an affair. It is unclear if someone at the federal agency actually was behind the edits, which were first reported by Washington Free Beacon reporter Lachlan Marquet. Listen to this carefully. But both changes on McCarthy's Wikipedia page and Elmer's page show that a user at the IP address 216.81.81.85 made them on Thursday. That's today. Take a guess where that address comes from. It comes from DHS offices in Springfield, Virginia. So somebody in DHS allegedly went on to his Wikipedia page and smeared him. How is that for a government at work? How is that for Department of Homeland Security? How is that? How do you feel now knowing that the DHS has become a division of the Obama smear machine? Or worse yet, it could be the Hillary machine. We don't know who did this. So it means now a couple of things, if this is true. and It's obviously true. McCarthy accused of a fair on Wikipedia. The edits, as I said, came from a Homeland Security address. Are we now living in a banana republic? Yes. We're living in a... It's so corrupt that the government itself will smear people who opposes its policies. That's something that you would have seen in Uruguay 30 years ago. Even Uruguay is cleaner than this country under Obama. Obama has so destroyed this country that his own Department of Homeland Security would smear a candidate for a speakership in an, in an opposition party. How can a progressive celebrate a thing like this? Answer, because they're all like Rosie O'Donnell. They smoke pot and watch cartoons. Yeah, okay, here we are. Another big hour, be here or be nowhere. And never forget what I said to you. Government Zero tells it all. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk. 
borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. All right, it's hour three. So for two hours, we talked about the attack on the American hero of the French train uh, incident. The police are absolute stiff-lipped about it. They will not disclose any more than it was Asians, but we know Asians are used as a you know a statement in, in the EU and Britain, PC places, to describe an awful lot of people. And I, I find it absurd in this day and age that we can't know who did it so we can help them find them. But nevertheless, we covered that. Then at the end of the hour, it came out that McCarthy dropped out of his candidacy to become the next Speaker of the House and replacing Boehner because somebody went on to his Wikipedia page and altered it and put in that he was having an affair with another Republican, in this case a woman, thank God. And I say thank God, uh, given the world we live in, at least it was a grown woman. I mean, you got to say that almost for a Republican to have an affair with a grown woman, I'm not saying they should, but, you know, I'm just saying. People are laughing already. No, I mean, I like saying just saying. It, it fills in a lot of blanks because then I can't be accused of saying what I just said by implying just saying. But for a white Republican male in the middle age to ha be caught having an affair with a woman, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, but that's no joke. So they smeared him, and, and the, guess the IP address of the smear job comes from the DHS. Bing, bingo. That's all. Came from the DHS, the new fascist dictatorship. Like I'm shocked the DHS is turning on America. Oh, really? The same DHS that lets illegal alien gangbangers come into America, looks the other way when Muslims coming in from Syria and doesn't vet them? Right. Okay. So as a result of that, during the break, I finished my salt and pepper shrimp, which was delivered to me from an Asian restaurant by a young man in a white T-shirt. <laughs> I'm sorry. I finished the salt and pepper shrimp and I perused the Michael Savage page on Wikipedia. I said, okay, if they're doing it to McCarthy, why do I do to me make something up, right? So I'm looking at it and nothing was added yet. Better known by friend Michael Savage, American radio host, author, actor, and I have a very long Wikipedia entry. But it's pages upon pages. Since October 2012, Savage has been syndicated by Cumulus. He holds master's degrees from the University of Hawaii, medical botany, medical engineering, PhD, University of California. Blah, blah, blah. He has written books on nutrition, herbal medicine, homeopathy, blah, blah, blah. four political best-selling books. Blah, blah, blah. Savage has summarized his political philosophy in three words, borders, like and culture. Savage characterized his views as nationalism. What critics Four political best-selling books, blah, blah, blah. Savage has summarized his political philosophy in three words, borders, language, and culture. Savage has characterized his views as conservative nationalism, while critics have characterized them as fostering extremism or hatred. So it's now, it's now extremist to love your own country. Don't you love that from the psychos who run the country? Savage opposes illegal immigration to the United States, supports the English-only movement, and argues that liberalism and progressivism are degrading American culture. Although his radio delivery is mainly characterized as politically themed, Savage also covers topics such as medicine, nutrition, music, literature, history, theology, philosophy, sports, business, economics, and culture, and tells personal anecdotes. That's good. That is true. That's what separates me from the boys. And that's what's going to have me doing radio until God takes me to his kingdom to be his personal entertainer. Since 2009, Savage has been barred from entering the UK for allegedly seeking to provoke others to serious criminal acts and fostering hatred. <laughs> seeking to provoke others to serious criminal acts. That was the Labour Party, the corrupt pornographer there. He described his childhood as difficult. His father, the owner of an antique shop, died of a heart attack in 57. And his mother died in 2000. After graduating, I'm not going to read all this. What is this now? During his time, Savage also worked for famous psychedelic drug advocate Tim Leary. I didn't work for him. As keeper of the Stone Gatehouse on the Hitchcock Cattle Company estate in Millbrook, New York, which Leary had been given access to, I wasn't hired. Leary hired him to the post because Savage did not use LSD himself. That's true. And the rest, some of it's true. Blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Who are they accusing? Oh. Oh, they went to all these people who are jealous of me to ask them what they think? 